Hello and welcome to this Automation Blocks for After Effects class where we create some tools to create cool burst shapes in no time or highlight shapes. Let me quickly show you how this looks like in action. I've got here a little sample project with these text layers and I can just say right before this layer appears, so I go to here, I want to have the highlight shape circle around it. So I run the tool and it inserts a shape layer here at the right point and in the right shape to create this animation around this highlight. And then I go to this layer and say at this point in time it should create something else. Maybe we want to go here for this burst shape with gravity and then for the fun of it let's also add here to the third shape some flying lines maybe run and now it created all those shapes here in no time and adjusted them to the location of these different layers here. From a technical perspective, in this tutorial you learn how to work with shapes and how to work with presets in automation blocks and how to measure like the size and location of layers. If you create cool other tools based on the ideas you learn here, it would be great if you share them with us such that we can share them in our community library because I'm sure the tools you create will also be super useful for others. So now let's get started. So the first thing you actually need to do when you want to create such a tool is to do the actual design work. And I did this here already. So for all these different highlight or burst shapes, I've got here uh, shape layers. So this is for example, the one for the flying lines, animating like this. And then we've got here the star, for example, like this. And all of them are just shape layers with shapes and keyframes and some of them expressions and some of them has al have also effects. So for example, the earthquake here has some effect controls to pick colors. Everything that can be stored in an animation preset uh, could be part of this design now. And then once we designed it, we want to actually save it in an animation preset. So we go to select everything we did on this layer. So in this case, the shape layer contents and the effects we created on it. And we go to here, save animation presets. And as you can see, I have here already FFX files for all these different designs that I did here. So one for each of these designs, one for each of those layers. So I'm going to cancel now. And the next step would be to create a tool with automation blocks that applies this preset to a new layer. So to apply presets, presets are applied to layers. So we find the block for this in the layer category. Here we find apply preset. And all you need to do is to say to which layer is it applied and which preset file. Now we could click here and then just pick one of these FFX files that you've just created. The drawback of this would be, let me maybe just do this here, click OK. Now it refers to the FFX file on your hard drive. And if you send this tool later to somebody else, you must ensure that he has the FFX file on exactly the same location in the same file path. And this is not really a great thing. So there's a much more elegant solution. And this is when you go to the files category, you find here the embedded file block. This one looks almost the same and it works the same. You can just click here and now choose one of the FFX presets you want to apply. But now the big difference is that this is now stored as part of the tool we create. And if you send the tool to somebody else, it will make sure that this file will also be on this new machine. So it will like first create the file in a special temporary folder that belongs to automation blocks and then use this file that it created. Okay, now we want to apply this to a layer and we want to apply it actually to a new shape layer. So we need to create a layer. We go to the layer category again and there's the create new layer block. We put it here at the top and we want to create a shape layer and call this highlight shape for example. This is just the layer name. We want to create it in the active composition and now we need to tell the apply preset block that it should use the layer that we've just created here. Here it says layer as my layer, which means the layer that this block creates is afterwards saved in the variable my layer. So in variables, we find the variable my layer. And if we drag this here and throw this in the garbage, this tells automation block that their preset should be applied to the layer that we've just created here. Uh, so we can just test this. Say here in this design, we just run our tool and you can see it creates a new layer highlight shape. And if we take a look at it, you can see here it 
creates this animation that was stored in the preset. Also note that if we take a look at the keyframes, they start at the position where the current time indicator was. Yeah? This is just the default behavior of presets. Now it would be cool if we could also set the start of the layer, the in point, to this point and also trim the end of it accordingly. And to do this, we need to set some more properties of this layer, my layer that we just created here, some attributes more precisely. We go to layer and say set attribute. And for this, you can really set all kinds of things for this layer, uh, like it's three layer switch, the audio enabled switch, all kinds of things. And one of them is also the in point. Note there is the in point and there's also the start time. Here. The difference between the two is if you move the start time, it's like moving the layer around, including all the keyframes, yeah, like this. This would set the start time, but if you want to just change the in point here, this would be the in point. Let me quickly undo this and go here to in point. We want to set the in point of this layer and we want to set it to the current time of the composition, where we are currently. Yeah? So here we've set an attribute of a layer. What we need to get now is an attribute of the composition. So we go to composition and go to here, get attribute. And the attribute we need is the current time. Get current time of active composition. This sets the in point to where we currently are. And then I duplicate this and say we also want to set the out point. And this should obviously not be at the current time, but a little bit later. So we use some math block to add something to the current time, like this. And let me just check for the highlight shape flying lines. Highlight shape flying, flying lines is this design. This ends at this frame here, this is frame number 27. So since this frame start at zero, this is the 28th frame at 24 frames per second. So the duration of this in seconds is 28 divided by 24. This is 1.16666 or rounded 1.167. So plus 1.167 1 is now the duration of this. Let's quickly test this, I delete the old highlight shape, move to some point in time and run the script. And you can see it trimmed my new layer now exactly to this duration and plays back our animation during that time. So that's the end of the first class. And next time we are going to extend the tool as you can see here, such that when you select several layers and run the tool, it creates one burst shape for each selected layer and adjusts both the position and the scale of those layers to the respective layers that they belong to. That's it for now and I'm looking forward to see you in the next class.